uh, I'm not an SEO expert. I'm very tentative about anything SEO. SEO sells like hotcakes, and everyone has been promising uh, for years that uh, we are going to put your website on the first page on Google. Uh, and that is something that uh, is an unachievable target in the way that you cannot control that target. You cannot say that that is a guaranteed outcome that can uh, happen. Uh, another thing to note is that there is no universal first page. Uh, right, uh, uh, in the sense that every user sees a different first page uh, uh, at any point. Uh, like if I am logged in as Sovic and Google has a little bit of my history uh, and knows a little bit about me, it will show a different set of results to me than someone else. So even if you see yourself on the very first page on your search, uh, uh, you shouldn't be very happy about it uh, because it doesn't mean uh, much in the larger uh, web context. Uh, Another interesting thing is that uh, because of this reason for very unexplicable uh, uh, services uh, has been uh, it, uh, it's being sold as SEO for years. Uh, and, uh, and if you search for snake oil and if you search for SEO and snake oil, you'll get nearly like uh, 22 uh, lakh uh, uh, results on uh, uh, Google. Uh, so right back in 2009, uh, a, li a little before uh, uh, I started my own web design uh, studio, uh, there was an article that talked about this. So I, I could I could probably click on the link over here and like here's the here's the article that talks talks about this spammers, evil doers, opportunists, uh, opportunists, uh, and how how SEO is often uh, uh, sold like uh, 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 like a snake snake oil salesman. Uh, you don't know how it how it works, but you still end up uh, selling uh, SEO as a service. Uh, and, and, and clients also don't understand how SEO itself uh, has been working. Uh, so this session, in a way, I, we would try to discuss and I, I try to talk about how is it that SEO works uh, and how do people discover a website? Uh, and then I'll go, go on to uh, the technical SEO part. So the second point over here, uh, I'll, uh, I'm running because of the disconnection. I'm running a little behind, so I'll just continue over here. And after the end of this, I'll probably take a little pause to ask if anyone has any questions. So how do people usually find a website? Uh, uh, and if that is a question that you uh, have to answer, the first way you can, one of the things that you can say is people search. Uh, people search uh, on on search engines like Google, like Bing, uh, DuckDuckGo, any other tool uh, they might be using. Uh, and they end up, and they also search these days. Uh, search engines are also integrated inside uh, many operating systems. Uh, so if you're searching on your phone, if often the search also gets conducted on the web. Uh, and if someone, uh, uh, and if you have to optimize for people who are going to reach your website through search, uh, that is usually a low expense uh, activity uh, for uh, a business uh, or or any organization. If you have to optimize for people coming in from, uh, from organic search. Uh, it's a moderate effort uh, because you need to keep ensuring that you're maintaining a certain degree of quality, a certain uh, rate of updating things and all. Uh, and it can give you a compound, compounded uh, uh, ROI. Uh, so what, what I mean by a compounded ROI is that you won't see results immediately. Uh, it will start coming, uh, say, some months down the line. And as more and more months pass, a few years pass, you can have a pretty good authority on certain search terms uh, or certain search subjects, and, and lots of people are going to end up finding you. And at that point of time, your ongoing effort still continues to be a moderate effort, uh, which is why I'm calling it like a low expense, moderate effort uh, route to make sure that people are able to discover your site through search. Uh, this next is like say social social networks. So that can be a place uh, where people discover your website or, or simply stumbling upon your site on uh, on uh, platforms where customers or users already are, and they just find your link. Uh, now, this is a, a social media being being there on social media and all is like a medium expense, uh, high effort route. Uh, and why I'm saying that is because you have to constantly keep make, make sure that a certain uh, posts, links, uh, offers, or or updates about you is ge getting pushed on the social network and. Anything that goes in the in the social network uh, uh, space of things, uh, it goes away uh, uh, within hours or days, uh, and and new fresh content keeps coming on. So you have to constantly do the effort of at a high rate, keep pushing out these micro uh, 
consumable content uh, on these social networks and therefore it also becomes a little bit more expensive uh, and the return on the social network can be spotty people who uh, people who are already aware of you might get bored of you uh, after point of uh, after some time they might leave uh, some of them will be interested uh, some of them will be really interesting they'll share further you might suddenly see a spike of people coming in from social network and then it will be spotty it will be good sometimes sometimes it will be bad it'll keep changing uh, and ads is the third way in which people can uh, come uh, come to your website and reach your website and this is something that is obviously a high expense because you are paying uh, uh, platforms which hold a large number of eyeballs uh, whatever that platform might be uh, that could be the search that could be social network facebook instagram uh, anything else uh, it's also low to moderate effort because you do need to strategize what to add, what ad to put in constantly publish those ads uh, produce them publish them uh, and so on but it will give you a very quick return uh, so very quickly people lots of people will see you uh, and 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 they'll uh, uh, land up on your website if you have any thoughts around uh, this this point uh, how people uh, come to your website. Feel free to ask a question, raise your hand, uh, uh, or something, and I, I can try to uh, take those questions and take that as a discussion. But broadly, these are the three ways people come in and find a website. And I'm only excluding things like re-engagement uh, strategies, like for example, sub subscription newsletter and all. I'm keeping that out uh, from there because over here I'm mostly talking about discovery uh, of your website rather than. Uh, uh, being updated of new things because there are then over there also there is a world of different things that you can do. But over here I'm mostly talking about discovery of a new site. Uh, so I'll I'll continue to my next section. Uh, if anyone ha has any questions, uh, keep asking, raising hand, and putting it uh, on the comment or the Q and A tab so that I can see them. Uh, so the next point that I want to discuss is how a search engine actually works, which is that if you are focusing on this part search, although in reality, uh, whenever we are talking about SEO, we really mean that we want to get more and more new people to our website, more and more new people to uh, whatever we are publishing. So we don't necessarily, when I go later in uh, technical SEO, you would, you would notice that it goes beyond the scope of search as well into the other parameters also to a certain extent. Uh, but uh, uh, let me uh, start with how a search engine works and what are ranking signals and all. Uh, okay, ranking signal is something that I discuss a little later, but anyways. Uh, so one is people search on search engine to find things. That is something that uh, you, uh, I think everyone is well aware of. Uh, and if I have to compare it and take an analogy in the real world, I think one can compare it to any of the food delivery or uh, aggregator services uh, like Zomato, Swiggy, Uber Eats, any of these things that you may, may have used. And uh, think of it how it happens in the real world. There are hundreds of restaurants out there. Uh, Zomato, Swiggy or any food delivery uh, aggregator service wants to make sure that you as a customer connects with these restaurants through them. And therefore they'll send out people on the ground to go around uh, collecting uh, menu cards, addresses, and data from each and every restaurant. That's how they started until they became very popular. Uh, now, now restaurants might go to Zomato or go to Swiggy and submit their information. But earlier when they started, they would actually send people uh, to each and every uh, eatery out there to collect their data. And they aggregate that data on their website. And that process of going out, collecting the information and aggregating it is similar to what in the search space we call it scrolling. So what do search engines do is they, they are nothing but programs that crawl the web or they, crawl, uh, they just crawl the internet. And, and it is in the interest of the food delivery aggregator to cover all restaurants that are around because uh, if they can say that come to us and you will find every restaurant in your city, you won't miss any. And if you know one of your local restaurant that is close by, you will find on this platform. If, if that is a kind of a surety you can give, then more and more people will trust them. Uh, and the same with Google, uh, that is, uh, Google wants to make sure that they are able to have as many websites crawled and indexed on their, on their service. Uh, the other thing is that all the delivery, uh, food delivery aggregators have a very customer centric motto, something like, uh, we want to make sure that you get the best food experience or you get the tastiest food, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the same thing, uh, is something that Google wants to do as well very customer centric or very user centric to say that uh, 
th that is a search engine. Their business is to organize the world's information and to make it universally accessible and useful for ev everyone, essentially. Uh, so uh, that, that's the idea of what, uh, what Google wants to do. They want to connect every individual who are there on, on online searching for certain information to that information and at the highest quality website uh, that can fulfill that information. So that's something that's how a search engine works uh, in a way. So search the ranking signal bit. I'll just cover in the next point. If anyone has any questions around this, feel free to ask. Uh, so I'll keep repeating that question at every section because I, I have reasonable amount of time to discuss each point in a greater detail if you're interested or else I'll keep moving on. Uh, the next is now what is search engine optimization really what we are trying to do. Search engine optimization is a thing wherein we are trying to make sure that the search engines, which is really your friend or your agent in a way, is able to do its job well. That's, that's all we are trying to do. We, what, we try, what we want to do is if Google has a focus on something, then Google should be able to facilitate it. Uh, if I take the, back the food an analogy, uh, if I say that I want to uh, make myself optimized for Zomato or a Swiggy or something like that, I would make sure that my menu cards are well printed or th they are well structured. My, I have a board outside my restaurant so that a, a person who is going by, uh, by on a two wheeler is able to spot my restaurant and quickly is able to reach my restaurant. You know that they are looking for you and you help them reach them faster. That's broadly what what you're trying to do as a part of search engine optimization. Now, what this means is you have to understand what are their needs and motivations as, as a search engine. So I've, I've basically boiled it down to two questions. Like what does a crawler need a uh, search engine crawl, uh, crawl, uh, crawler? It is to be able to reach your pages, uh, your web pages, website that is there. It should be able to read your pages. It should be able to understand your pages and, uh, uh, just note that a crawler is a blind user, a deaf user, a fairly stupid user uh, in the in the sense that uh, doesn't possess. Uh, 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 although the intelligence of these crawlers are in increasing and increasing further, uh, it would be hard to, or it would still be probably inaccurate to say they can match a human intelligence. Uh, even at, at this point of time, maybe sometime decades down the line. Uh, they might become more intelligent than humans. But at this point of time, just note that these are programs, software programs that are coming and trying to read your site. They're not able to see your site. They, not, they can't hear your site. Uh, they try to just get those text pieces, the, those images, absorb them and try to make sense of them. And therefore they need the code to be clean, the website to be accessible, that text is better than everything else for them to understand because a text is probably the most accessible piece of information. Uh, images can, uh, they all algorithms are improving slowly, but images can get hard to understand. Uh, JavaScript dependence is low. That is uh, uh, something that would be better. Although I would add that uh, Google uh, as a search engine have started saying that they, they are processing uh, uh, JavaScript these days. But that is not something that you can really rely on yet. Uh, it will take some time before JavaScript can be uh, can be processed really well. And more importantly, Google isn't the only crawler that's out there. Uh, just because uh, it's one of the most uh, built by one of the uh, uh, largest organizations in the world, or the m most the richest organization is in the world, it is probably ahead of the curve than many other crawlers that are out there. But for us to be able to make sure that we are crawler friendly, we should probably rely less on executive uh, code execution at the craw craw crawler end. Uh, so that is, these are the things that if we can make sure that uh, these elements are there in our code and these are slightly technical in nature. It's, it's, like uh, it's like trying to understand how does a program or a software read your content as opposed to how a human perceives your content. So if you are able to understand that, then you will be able to uh, provide the basic need of what a search crawler uh, requires. The next point is that what does a search company favor or what does a search company want? And uh, so the, as I pointed out, the goal of Google or any other search company is to make sure that they are able to serve their users best. So if I'm a person who is searching, they want to know as much about me so that they can give me the best results so that I can have a continued reliance on and trust on, on their service 
that I make sure that Google continues to be my uh, default search engine and search continues to be my preferred way of uh, browsing the internet or, or uh, uh, finding things on the inter on, on internet. And, and then they come up with certain parameters that what will make sure that the users are served best. Uh, one is uh, one, of course, I, I, I just want to outrightly say that, of course, they want you to, to connect you to a content that is relevant, right? So that is better quality content, content that is interesting and relevant. That is something there. But they are also caring about whether your site is mobile friendly. Is it secure? Is it performant? How fast is it? Uh, uh, even language can be a, a barrier in the sense that if someone is searching in a particular local language, uh, they uh, Google would uh, want to make sure that sites that are there in those local languages, uh, they are sent to uh, such sites so that they are able to read and consume, consume it. At the end of the day, search engines, what they want to do is they want to make a right match and prefer a good user experience. Uh, so all else being equal, or I won't say all else being equal. Uh, I, I would rather say uh, it's not a perfect world that uh, two websites will have exactly the same quality of content. Uh, but uh, provided that two websites uh, pass the benchmark of content relevance and all, then the uh, website experience becomes one of the most important factors that uh, Google or other search engines consider to rank you high on uh, uh, the search results. So uh, what does the page experience uh, mean? I, as I pointed out, mobile friendliness, security, performance, and many other things that, that are out there. So these are all used in the ranking bit that I said that I'll cover in this, uh, in this part. Uh, all these factors and parameters convert into something called ranking signals. And a, and a service like Google has many, probably a couple of hundred uh, ranking signals that are out there. They are not documented. They are like the, the, the uh, Coke recipe or the Coke formula. Uh, that's their secret sauce. Uh, they will uh, not tell you everything, but they will tell you enough that they believe you should know so that you can optimize the website, your own website to work well with Google. So they do tell up, they do outrightly specify some things that these are the things that you must do uh, in order to make sure that uh, Google is able to crawl your site and work with your site. Uh, and these, these factors act as ranking signals and they, these ranking signals inform their search algorithm uh, about which page should be prioritized higher in their search results. So that's broadly, broadly how search engines itself work. So you have a certain set of parameters. If you optimize your website on those set of parameters, your content is relevant. Google is able to crawl you and Google and is able to see that you are delivering a good high quality experience to the client, to your users, then Google will rank you higher. It just basically boils down to something like this. If there are any questions around this part, I can take that or I can just continue. I'll, I'll just carry on. But if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop that uh, in as well. All right. So the next point is that I have is how SEO services are different from technical SEO. And, and why do I believe, uh, and, I, and I want to state this, I do believe that technical SEO is something that one should prioritize over the latter. Uh, first, just to, I, I have just a few basic points over here, and this is something that I expect more to be a discussion, but I'll just speak, speak out my mind for a few minutes over here. Uh, so technical SEO is all about technical interventions. So what are the technical interventions you can do to make sure that your website is optimized for the search engine, uh, search engines essentially. Uh, now, but then aside from the technical intervention, you need to do some strategic planning as well, right? Uh, now, strategic planning, like what should I be talking about? Uh, if if I take a, take a simple example, like uh, say I'm a t-shirt company as an example. Uh, and I want to sell t-shirts or, or uh, uh, it could also be that I am a nonprofit and I, I am talking about say the health sector as an example, we can take one or both the cases for the t-shirt company. Someone has to think about, okay, what are the latest fashion trends? What are the things that we are doing? What are the uh, problems people might be facing with uh, other t-shirts that are out there? And you would be constantly writing, talking, publishing about, oh, my stitching is great. My quality of uh, 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 the material is is really good, or or you might be actually seeing relevance to different use cases. So a sports specific T-shirt or a 
uh, or a comfort wear t-shirt or a home use t-shirt and things like that you will think of which are the several places uh, or ways in which people might be thinking or thinking about their clothing thinking about their apparel and you will have to produce some interesting information around it uh, that's the strategy part that you need to do you need to know what are the pe what are people thinking about what are people talking about what are people what potentially people are searching about and if you're running a t-shirt business you most likely know that uh, and that is how you come up with your product in the first place. Same with, as I said, the, the, the nonprofit, which is talking about health sector, you might be optimizing your, your website for two different use cases. One is you might be looking for more funding. So you might be talking about why this is a sector which requires, needs a lot of fund. What are the uh, impact possibilities out there? And also so that you can catch the eyeballs of a potential uh, donor out there. And similarly, on the other hand, you might be actually trying to reach out to the end beneficiary or other partners out there, in which case you might uh, uh, have to imagine and think about, uh, okay, what are the different activities and collaborations I can do? What are the challenges that other partners might be facing, which I can fulfill? Strategize your information, strategize your content, talk about it, write about it, post about it, publish uh, conversations around it, speak, speak out those things. So that strategic planning is required. And there, again, if you're running an organization or if you're running a website, there's a very, very good chance that you know what people need, you know what people want, and that, and you need to put in the work to make sure that your information aligns to the set of the your end user or your target customer. Uh, but this strategic planning should not be SEO focused in the sense that. Uh, uh, if you are talking anything about the quality of clothes or the utility of clothes in 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 uh, a sports uh, space or in comfort wear or in 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 casual uh, home wear or anything like that uh, those are things that people are generally talking about you could use those terms while you're pitching uh, to an investor you can use those terms while you're pitching to a customer you can use your terms when you're pitching to a manufacturer or or your vendors and things like that uh, and they, they are universally known words, universally understood uh, language of communication. Uh, that's what you're using. You are not focusing on SEO. You're focusing on making sure you're able to communicate. So, uh, so I'd rather say focus on communication rather than SEO. And there is no need to uh, outsmart the system. There is nothing, uh, there is no need to do something wherein uh, you are going to feed certain things to the search engines that are out there, which would in turn show, make sure that your website would come up. Uh, instead, focus on the users or the customers because that is what actually uh, rewards or and that is what uh, actually ma matters even for the search engines uh, at the end of the day. And keyword-based thinking, stuffing is dated. Many other strategies have now become dated uh, because constantly the algorithms are improving and the great thing is uh, Google and search and other search engines are writing about how they are improving their algorithm, how they are making uh, any tricks to outsmart their own system redundant as time progresses. So uh, what is again, going back to the question, what is the difference between an SEO service and a technical SEO? Technical SEO focus all on the technical intervention. The SEO service tries to focus on a lot more, including what are the strategies. Sometimes they go into strategies into black hat territory. Sometimes they remain in the white hat territory, black hat territory being tricks, which will out, uh, try to outsmart the system uh, uh, and all. Uh, the, under those cases where you are not able to strategize or you're not able to constantly do the hard work of making sure you're publishing high quality content or, or relevant information, Sure enough, you should probably have a SEO uh, a service or a SEO consultant help you out in it, help you understand these things, the same set of things that I am talking about right now in this uh, session. But in case you feel fairly confident that you have a reasonable communication strategy in place, which is not search specific, then what you really, really need to focus on is the technical SEO part, because that's what most organizations uh, fail to do. And that's what Google and other search engines are trying to push that please make sure that your website is crawlable. Please make sure you're delivering a good experience and few other things. Uh, so that's broadly the, what I wanted to uh, discuss and, and mention. And if there are any other questions or thoughts, I, I'm happy to uh, take those as well. Uh, 
All right. So uh, the next point that I have is let's take a brief look at uh, the Moz SEO cheat sheet. Uh, in case you are a developer, uh, this is the part that makes the uh, uh, that, that that has the depths of uh, what are uh, the the technical interventions that you need to do in any website to make sure they are uh, uh, they are uh, relevant. Uh, or, or, or sorry, make sure they are they uh, feature well on search. Search crawlers are able to crawl the site, and and search engines after crawling the site uh, feel that your website is worthy of a high page rank. Uh, the SEO cheat sheet talks about several things, but I want to not dive directly deep into this because if you're a developer and you go through this, you will understand this much better. But I want to just skim through this so that and make it much more simpler for if if you're not a developer, uh, you are also able to understand why are some some of these things required. So I'll take about five ten minutes just to go through each of these points, to tell you what what is the relevance of each of these points. But they are all taken from the Moz SEO cheat sheet, which is this one. Uh, they have a bunch of good practices mentioned in there, so you should probably take a look at them. Uh, so what are the Ten points they have. The first one, they uh, one of the things that they start off with. They talk about something called the Webmaster Tool. So Webmaster Tool is uh, is a tool that all search engines, most search engines, or many search engines give in different formats uh, that make sure that if you are uh, uh, have a technical under, uh, if if you are, have a technical background, you are able to get your website audited using these tools uh, so that they can. Make sure they point out that if there are something that is horribly wrong on your site, or something that you're not doing well on your site, uh, the official search engine tools are going to point point these things out to you. Uh, so that is the tool that you can really trust. Uh, and in case you are not a developer, I, I, I'll make this conversation more from a non-developer perspective. Uh, if you are a person who is owning a website, you should ask your developer to make sure that. They have set up the webmaster tool, and they are constantly monitoring it and reporting if there is any issue out there. Now, the other thing that uh, the next point that uh, the Moz SEO cheat sheet talks about is make sure that important HTML elements are there. Uh, HTML is the language in which or most websites are written, or most content is coded. Uh, the information is coded. When a search engine goes in, they and they pick up the the your website pages. What they are actually doing is picking up HTML code, and within HTML code, there are certain key tags that enable a search engine to understand your uh, uh, the 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 site itself, the meaning of the site, what is the title of the page, what is the title of the website, uh, lots of meta information um, uh, 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 are also out, out there as as a part. This is something that is mentioned in the first, the title tag, the meta description, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing they talk about is hyperlinks. So making sure that uh, uh, all the links that that you're putting out uh, out there, uh, they you use a certain set of keywords to indicate that are they paid link, are they sponsored link, or are they links that uh, uh, that the search engine should consider as important links, and 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 uh, uh, which which are also a ranking signal. For search engines to rank other sites, and similarly, if there are other sites that are linking to you, then how they link to you makes a difference whether your site gets ranked high or not. Uh, similarly, if you have multiple site pages which have the same content but slightly in a different format, you might want to uh, tell uh, the search engine that look. Uh, I have these three pages which are in slightly diff different variants of the same content, but Effectively, it's the same content. Just just think of a, a, a tag page or a taxonomy page, or thing, or which are filtered in different order. Or if you are putting out different uh, 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 marketing pages out there, or different campaign pages, alternate campaign pages, but there is one master campaign, uh, then you really what you really want to do is to tell the search engine that look, this is my canonical page. Whatever information is there on this canonical page, the, these five other URLs or these five other pages are only reusing the information from this master page. Make sure that my that this, my master page gets most of the SEO juice or most of the uh, value in in your eyes, uh, in the search engine size. Those are some of the things you can do, and also you can make sure that if there are uh, pages within your own site that you are linking through hyperlinks, uh, those pages 
are giving out a right the right http uh, status code http status code is uh, uh, essentially a way in which uh, uh, the your website tells whether your uh, this that particular page that is being accessed works or not uh, what search engines do is they rely a lot on links uh, in in order to even discover 10 different pages within your website or some other website they will try to follow the links that are there on your site to to discover and rank those pages. So whenever you have links on your page, making sure that those link quality is good, they are, uh, they are all functional and they are all working and they are not links which are pointing to dead ends and they are not links that are constantly pointing to the same information multiple times over, degrading the user experience in any way. Are, those are certain things you need to take care of. The URL structures are also the next most, uh, another very important thing. Uh, whenever you're making your website, make sure that when you're reading the URL itself, uh, they don't, uh, uh, if, if you are especially a website that is trying to optimize and search, they shouldn't read like this. That is that, that the URL that you see out there, which, which is paper uh, dot dot com slash doc slash, uh, there's some hex, uh, some, uh, 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 uh gibberish, uh, uh, an, uh, random, uh, set of letters and numbers out there. Uh, you want to make sure that someone who is reading the website URL is able to make a sense of the entire uh, uh, URL itself and they communicate a meaning. Look at this particular URL of the search console itself. So search.google.com uh, slash search console slash about almost telling you that when you click on this link, you are going to get into an about page of the search console. Uh, or at least that's, that's what it talks to me about. And, and, and it's a clean readable URL. That's what you want it to be. The other one is a big.com slash toolbox slash webmaster. Uh, so make sure that your URLs are clean. They are structured. And that's something that, uh, the, uh, the search engines are able to understand as well. Uh, so, uh, if you're owning a website and you see question mark node equal to this page ID equal to 17 and, and URLs like that, make sure that you're asking your developers to change that and improve that. Uh, the fifth point is. There's a robots exclusion standard out there, which, uh, uh, which can, uh, guide search engines to say that, Hey, do not crawl a certain part of my site. Do not index a certain part of my site or the other way around, please index a certain part of this site. Uh, make sure that those settings are done correctly so that your entire website or to the extent that you want it to be crawled, they are all there. Uh, and, and the search engine is indexing all of them, whether search engine is able to, uh, find them or index them or not. That is something that you can validate in the webmaster tool or the search consoles itself. Uh, the next point, which is the point number six is sitemap. Uh, sitemap essentially is, uh, is a programmatic, uh, directory of all the pages that your website contains. And that is something, if you can give it to Google, Google knows your site contains a thousand, 10,000, 20,000, a lakh pages, and Google will go in and crawl them at a certain interval, uh, or at a, and it will give them a certain degree of priority as you mentioned in your sitemap. So sitemap is also something that can enable discovery of all pages of your website in the eyes of Google or in the eyes of a search engine. So make sure you have yours properly configured. The seventh point is the one that deviates away from search a little bit. Uh, so social media meta metadata is are, are uh, certain parameters that you add to your website uh, so that when anyone takes your URL and puts it on Twitter or Facebook or some other uh, place, even sometimes internal sharing, like we use Slack a lot. I, if I share a, a, a URL on my Slack channel, you might have noticed that a very rich card gets uh, created out of it where a featured image comes out, the title of the page comes out, who has written it, th those things come out, uh, and so on and so forth. These are maintained and these are possible, uh, through social meta, uh, uh, metadata tags. And, uh, there are Twitter tags out there. There are Facebook open graph tags out there, which you must ensure that your website carries big so that your rate of discovery or spotting through social media increases a lot. Now, what gets shown, what gets shown as the featured card, what title comes out, et cetera, et cetera. There can be a very, uh, conscious strategy that can be created around it so that it does not create 
a huge extra additional workload on people who are really writing the content or typing out the content or publishing the content. Uh, there is a possibility one can reuse uh, 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 some parts of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the site uh, uh, site data itself or the page data itself. So, for example, if you have a page title, the same title can be shared with the SEO as well. Uh, or if you have a uh, a, a, a small uh, uh, or a long body, maybe first 20 characters of that body can be used as a description uh, or a descriptor of that page itself, things like that. So you could, can come up with different strategies out there. Uh, it totally depends what you eventually come up with and and uh, uh, how, how you strategize this information and how you populate the social social media metadata. But this, these are important ways in which new people can discover your websites through social media. Uh, then the next point is about rich snippets and structured data. Now, this is uh, uh, if you search on Google, uh, you would often find these rich cards that come up, which tell you an organization name, organization details, a person name, a person details, uh, or, or 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 things that are uh, that can instantly catch eyeballs or instantly catch your uh, attention, and they look quite different from your the from the the main content of the page itself now in order to generate those cards and generate those rich snippets what you need to do is you need to uh, make sure that certain additional information is embedded in your website uh, they are called as json ld or structured data and structured data can be form provided in many different formats uh, and and what you want to do is make sure that and you have the applicable formats on your site uh, also embedded because once you start looking for different things on on online you will uh, you will see that uh, lots of uh, 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 google is constantly rolling out these new features that can greatly increase the the potential of your your site being discussed for example you might have seen event searches job searches and all so so one can go and start i'm looking for a job here and google will suddenly pop up a rich place where uh, 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 or a rich snippet of uh, or uh, or a widget kind of a thing on on in, inside the search results page wherein you can indicate that this is the role this is the location and it will filter down job results or event results as well uh, things like these are enabled through the structured data that is embedded on your site so if you are talking about events if you're talking about jobs and many, many, many other formats, you want them to be available as structured data also on your page. How they are generated as structured data, again, your developer can help you in, in making sure that those, those are embedded out there. Uh, then the ninth point is targeting multiple languages. So if you are publishing in different languages other than English, uh, you can indicate and tell Google that, look, my website is also there in this language. My content is also there in this language. And, and therefore, Google will optimize uh, uh, the, the findability of your, uh, of your site's content in those particular language. Many of these things, Google is like getting smarter slowly. Slowly, it's getting smarter and it's able to detect those things by themselves as well. But if you can help Google, that will obviously give you an edge over Google's own capacity to intelligently figure these things out. And the last very big point, which is the 10th point, something that we have talked about a lot in, our, in the content web series is about performance. Uh, performance has become one of the key things that uh, search engines consider, uh, have started considering in order to make sure that your website ranks high on, on, on search results. Uh, there are multiple elements of performance that is out there. There is front end performance, there is back end performance. Uh, there are performance of how the page, how quickly a page can open up. Uh, and and uh, this performance is a subject that is uh, pretty wide in itself. But back in 2018, and from that point onwards, page speed uh, has, has been a ranking signal or has been a ranking factor uh, for, for all mobile searches that that google uh, has been doing and google of late has also started doing mobile first searches so what google has started doing is if you have a a, a website then it's going to make sure or or try to index what you show to a mo mobile user and and use that as uh, as forming their database uh, of content or database of indexes uh, about your site uh, if 
if you can make sure that your website is performing fast and quick and fast is a subjective term uh the the bench it's good to always have a benchmark for performance and one of the best benchmark for performance is the google page speed insights uh so uh, make sure that you are running your site on uh i'll try to uh Just search for the PageSpeed Insights thing over here. So this this is the Google PageSpeed Insight tool. If you run your own website through this, you would be able to uh, come up and see what are the, uh, the 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 what is the performance of the different sites that are out there uh, 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 for your own uh, for of your competitors of your own site, and it will also give you uh, a bunch of uh, recommendations about. hey uh, these are the things you can improve about your site and that those are important bits that you can do uh, in the site so if you go on to this uh, this particular blog post itself of google web webmaster uh, central blog which where in 2018 they have talked about what is the value of page speed and also if you go into the other link that i i had in there which is uh, talking about uh, this quickly uh, go in there which is talking about uh the web vitals which is a very recent co the core web vitals which is a very recent set of benchmarks uh, that google has started and in fact uh, uh in in this blog google webmaster central blog they keep putting out clear updates saying that very soon we are going to make change in this so they they are going to talk about the timing straight away they're saying that this is coming we will provide at least 6 months notice before they are rolled out there's no need to take immediate action but this is something that you should start preparing for and what are these they are over here they have started focusing on few very core vital uh, uh uh components which are uh something that detects how mobile friendly your site is how how quickly your website becomes interactive how uh in how less a time can your first page load in how less a or or how less do things shift in your in your page like for example if you uh, look at this uh, specific small video that is going on if you click on something that there's a jump in this these buttons these jumps are something that is considered as a bad experience so if google starts detecting these parts also in your website then it will start penalizing uh, 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 your site's ranking uh, it, uh, on on google so these are things uh, that you need to take care of from a technical point of view to make sure that your website has uh, a good ranking uh, out there uh, make sure you're testing on a uh, webmaster tool uh, make sure you are uh, you you validate your html have clear good quality links clear structured urls uh, the make sure your website is indexable the sitemap is provided to google make sure you have social metadata uh, tags uh, rich snippets and structured data to make sure that the the site results that come out are are very uh, uh, are using uh, google's rich snippets and and those features uh you are indicating to uh, google about the different languages that you have and focus on performance and uh one of the another big factor in performance is also uh, how many images you are using and are the images optimized because images become one of the biggest factors why your website becomes slow uh, and and that is something so if you look at uh, uh the performance aspect over here which is the last it is uh, google the moz uh, recommendation also talk talks about the page speed uh, talks about javascript how low is your javascript on on your page uh, so that the website or the browser does not spend a lot of time processing the code itself uh, and are you doing image optimization there are just some of the basics that are there but you can also test your page speed with not just lighthouse uh, or page speed insights the tool that i just opened over there but gt metrics web page test there so many other tools that are out there that you can use all right so uh coming to the close of of things uh, uh if there are any questions i'm happy to take but i just want to focus on this one last point that i have like who should be responsible for all this uh or who should be responsible for the seo of your website i think there are largely two points that you need to consider one is the content should be fresh adequate good quality and strategic and therefore you should invest in content uh invest in in the in in making sure that the uh information is covering uh is casting a wide net but while you are casting a wide net uh you are 
always relevant to your core business or your core value proposition that's out there so and and the second bit is uh if you engage with informed expert developers who are taking care of all these bits uh they are the most useful or the most uh important uh bits that google and other search engines suggest that you should do to, in order to make sure that you fare well on google's own search result page uh the roles and responsibility of uh, seo consultants and other people out there is there i won't completely write them off uh, uh but uh if they are having to come in there's a very good chance they'll go back to these two points only they are going to start tweaking your content to make them better or they are going to make sure that this technical seo bit is being taken care of uh and if there is anything else they're doing uh, i don't know i would love to discuss those bits as well and and understand those things further uh because these are the bits that uh, uh the search engines directly recommend that that you should be doing uh here are a bunch of links uh, out there uh and also uh, my contact details just in case you want to discuss a little bit more uh, uh there are there is a beginners guide to seo you can read this bit the cheat sheet the the summary points that i just laid out are from the the same as cheat sheet uh google has a starter guide as well for search search engine optimization google webmaster this is a complete portal which also has the webmaster blog uh linked through it uh which keeps giving new updates about what you need to look for in and what are the changes that might be happen happening in google's algorithms uh web.dev gives you some of the best practices that you should be following uh for your website uh google search console is something wherein you can validate and uh, whether your website is being crawled properly or not uh whether it is uh, uh whether any urls are generating errors uh, are they are, are they acting up are they uh, are, are, is there anything suspicious going on Uh, are there any security concerns in your page the, all these things google search in search console and now more recently uh, the web vitals uh, uh, audit also is something that a search console has started reporting and and lastly you can you must use the google page speed insights uh, in order to audit uh, the performance of your website uh, and and follow the best practices because these are things that our google is clearly laying out as uh, either some of them have already been incorporated as their ranking signal or soon more of these bits are going to get in, uh, incorporated in their ranking system so uh, if if there are any questions i would be happy to take that it's 6 uh, uh, we have 10 minutes in case people want to discuss anything have any questions uh, otherwise uh, it's an early evening for me this is the first time we are doing uh, this conversation uh, uh, yeah chitra has raised a hand uh, Okay so give me a second i have to make sure that i can hi chitra chitra hi chitra okay uh chitra you can speak and ask your question if you all right uh okay i'll just continue uh, so this is the first time uh, uh we have done uh, the conversation uh, in the evening we we have usually been doing our conversations uh, at uh, 11 on every saturday uh, and uh, i usually have uh, different guests talking about different subject areas uh, and we discuss on different topics uh, one of one very interesting session happened last saturday where we discussed amp with uh, nena who's Uh, who had joined us from san francisco and she was from the amp team google amp uh, and uh, uh, one more uh, very uh, uh, okay chitra has asked can you please take an example and do a walk through uh, okay uh, do a walk through of what uh, in this uh, which bit uh, you want to take an example of i i need a little bit more clarity in the question so if you can come up Uh, are you talking about the page speed insights audit uh chitra okay so so i'm having a hard time in connecting uh with chitra 
uh okay so uh, as i was saying uh, last week we had a uh, uh, amp uh, session uh, uh with uh, nena who was uh, who is from the amp team uh, uh and she joined in very late in the night her her time uh, from san francisco uh next week uh, we are uh, planning to do a session uh, on voice search which uh, which would probably take this conversation even further uh, where wherein uh uh wherein gorov from uh, srijan uh, would be joining in from uh, uh new york uh and uh, uh and uh and uh, we'll be talking about what should our content strategy itself be for uh, for optimizing us our websites for voice search which are the alexas and the uh, uh, uh okay googles and 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 so many other ways in which uh we feed in uh, voice search queries into all the different search engines uh, so that will be a very interesting conversation and uh, the week after we are going to talk uh, more in details about amp and many other things that we are trying to line up uh, there is another question out there which is how about off page factors like authority backlinks etc these days how important are they uh, now uh, none of official guidelines from uh, search engines talk about these things anymore in fact this is one of the biggest shifts that has started happening uh, uh over the last decade i would say wherein uh, lots of seo organizations would try to uh, like at the end of the day if you're if you're trying to put in backlinks towards on your own website because back in the day uh, one of the factors that uh, search engines used to use uh, to rank your site was how many other websites are referring to you if they have a link to your website then there is a very good chance your website is a is a popular site and it must be a good site that's why so many people are linking back to you uh, but very soon uh, uh, as as uh, uh, developers and other uh, specialists started uh, realizing this uh, uh, people started to trying to game this a uh, bit as well uh, which is to say that okay let us uh, start putting in our links at different places Uh, embed it all across all across the web uh, it uh, and uh, the more number of places and you started seeing spams and many other things because everyone is trying to innovate on how this is one insight i have from google how can i uh, make the most of it uh, even though google is not saying that this is something that you should be doing uh, and therefore uh, once people did that enough including uh, like for example the meta description tag wherein people started stuffing in a lot of keywords and all uh, once people started doing that enough google started withdrawing and they started realizing that this is not leading to a good search experience uh, what this, this implies is that people are trying to game the system and not focusing on giving a good high quality information to users but they are trying to increase the density of these backlinks or density of these keywords Uh, and all and that is not what a human would want to uh, uh, read about see about see or consume and they are not going to be happy about it so those factors are are things that uh, slowly and surely over the last 10 years or so uh, uh, google has i i would say that google has very often very clearly said that we don't want you to do these things or think of these things and they have also penalized organizations and websites for for trying to game their system uh, but of late search engines have become or the crawlers have become really smart and the algorithms have become really smart and they are not a part of good guidelines that google is giving uh, on on uh, to any uh, website owner that this is something that you should be doing authority uh, is something that is still considered as is a thing but that's not something that you can control really what you can do is uh, just take it outside the context of seo you want to be a a person who has an authority on a subject so that people will find when they look for that subject they find you and they reach out to you so if i am able to put out myself as as an authority on uh, on on say seo which i am not i started off with i am not an seo expert so i clearly did a bad job at that Uh, but if i put out myself as oh if you want anything seo then i am the person who knows about it uh, then people would try to look for survey can come to come to the, come to me send out an email to me when they have a question and all and i will be found in that case but that is because i am 
I have reached a position of influence and a position of authority. So those are things, things that you don't actively try to do in SEO, but you try to do to build that kind of a brand positioning for your brand in general. It's not a SEO specific thing. It's a brand positioning specific thing. Uh, and therefore I would generally say that if you're focusing on your brand or you're focusing on your website, uh, uh, authority backlinks and all are not the things that you should directly, uh, uh, optimize for in a way but instead on the other other hand you should optimize for the experience you're giving the information that you're giving is that useful and not and wait for your authority to be organically uh, uh getting established essentially that's where i uh, i i would put this as uh, because no search engine or is is asking you to do these things or uh, lay much emphasis on it Right. If there are any other question, I'm 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 happy to take those as well. Uh, so I'll uh, go back on to the the thing that I was uh, uh, otherwise sharing, which is uh, the next week we have uh, a session on uh, uh, voice search, which would which I think will be uh, interesting. There are also other sessions being planned uh, on on the content web series, uh, wherein uh, uh, there'll be things around newsletters. There'll be things. Uh, which uh, 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 a, a friend of mine, Abhishek, he's also uh, uh, trying to organize. Uh, every conversation that we do uh, on Content Web is of a different nature. They are mostly freewheeling chats. If there were more people at this hour uh, who would be interested in discussing this, we could have a longer conversation as well. Uh, and in, and some of the other sessions are where there's a very clear 20-minute presentation followed by a detailed Q&A uh, as well. Uh, and 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 we and sometimes I I am trying to do the moderating or someone else is trying to do the moderating so that it becomes useful for everyone. Uh, if you have any topics that you would want to learn about, know about about content uh, in the space of websites, in the space of content web, uh, please uh, drop in uh, up uh, either a proposal or a request on hasgeek.com/contentweb because that's where we are that's where we are collecting proposals. If you if you want to share anything that you have an insight or a knowledge around various subject, whether it's in the content uh, practice, which is around content strategy, content writing, how should uh, online content be written, any insights around that, we would love to hear about that. If you are a designer who has be, who has uh, some knowledge uh, uh, or an experience acquired around uh, 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 website interface designs, graphic design uh, that, that for the, or art direction on the web, uh, uh, please uh, reach out to us. We would like to have a chat with you on content web. Uh, and if you are a developer and you would want to bring in uh, any other expertise uh, or any other subjects of conversation uh, around HTML, CSS, backend, uh, server setups, uh, uh, performance, uh, uh, privacy, uh, uh, there can be legal directions also that uh, one, one could take, which is like things like GDPR and all. Uh, if you are someone who has experience with AMP, uh, we would love to ha have you on a uh, on a session that is two weeks from now when we are doing a much more deeper conversation on AMP, uh, whether uh, AMP is something that is uh, really practical or not for, for developers to follow and, uh, and adopt. And is it something that we believe is, is, is a good thing for, for the web in the long run or not? So these are uh, some of the subjects that we are talking about and discussing. Uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, any proposals, uh, or any requests for a subject areas of any of the subject of discussion, uh, please uh, drop in a comment uh, on uh, hasgeek.com slash content web. Right, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen now. Zainab, uh, yeah. do we have yeah. any message from Chitra now? Or? Chitra just says, uh, she says, thank you for taking time on us. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. We just wanted to make sure that we are doing because every Saturday we are having a session. Uh, it's it's tough to bring bring in a guest on an Independence Day. So I thought I'll give you all freedom from uh, SEO spammers. <laughs>